Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome aboard what I think is the best public sleeper train in Europe. It's my Caledonian sleeper review. Enjoy the video. Or at least that's what I said soon after I stepped on board. Keep watching to find out why the Caledonian sleeper ended up letting me down. The Caledonian sleeper leaves from Euston station in London every day except Saturday. Euston is nobody's favourite station, but it's where sleeper trains have run since, would you believe, 1873. Now, the modern iteration of Euston dates from the 1960s, and while being a brutalist architect's dream is now sorely out of date, renovation of the whole area is already underway for the HS2 era. Passengers in sleeping berths can access the lounge, which at the time of filming was run by Virgin. Now it's run by their successor company, Avanti, although I use this station all the time and can confirm nothing's really changed since the handover. There are showers available here for no extra charge at the rear of the toilets. The Caledonian sleeper consists of Mark V coaches built by Spanish company CAF and the Highlander has been running with these new coaches since last year. There are three portions which divide to form separate trains at Edinburgh. I'll be going to Inverness today. Fort William and Aberdeen are the destinations for the two other sections. Okay, typical, that's uh, carriage A, and I'm all the way in P, uh, which must be near the front of the train, so it's quite a long walk, 16 carriages on this train tonight. Seated accommodation is available and can come in as low as £53 one way, although I think the seats are a false economy unless your budget really demands it. Prices for all rooms are variable according to demand. I paid £184.80 for my solo ensuite on today's trip, although it can get as low as £99 if you have a rail card. Boarding begins about 45 minutes prior to departure. You check in with the host on the platform and find your room, which is dead easy. All the cabins are unlocked prior to your arrival. There are two things you should do straight away. One is to pick up the key card and follow the instructions on how to lock the door. And the second is to fill out the breakfast card along with any requests to be woken in case of disruption. On the way to the lounge car, we can see a disabled toilet, which is conveniently set next to the accessible room, which is able to take passengers in wheelchairs. The company also sells a few double bed berths on each train for a big premium. On this trip, it would have cost £399 to book this room. The club car is a far cry from the old lounge cars on the previous sleeper trains. It looks great and has plenty of single seats to accommodate solo passengers. The food menu is not terribly cheap, but then you're always going to pay for the convenience of eating on board a train. <laughs> the 
This time I didn't choose Scotland's national drink and instead had a gin and tonic. My first gripe with these trains, the solo seats in the club car leave your feet pressed against the wall and are far too small. Bar stools shouldn't have backs and force you to lean forward. It's really not comfortable at all and is the first in a series of things which look fantastic on this train but are terribly executed. Service was really fast thanks to a very hard working lounge host. I was almost finished by the time we reached the train's first stop, Watford Junction. I'd had a busy day so I returned to my room fairly early. I know as well as anyone how difficult it is in today's day and age to sit down and improve yourself with a book. And that's where today's video sponsor, Blinkist, comes in. Whether you're on a plane, taking a train, or just riding in a cab, Blinkist provides brilliant 15-minute summaries of the key takeaway points from thousands of non-fiction books you can either read or listen to. Sun Tzu's timeless book, The Art of War, is one of my favourite books, and alongside Robert Piercig's Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance are two great books. I've read the full versions of both and can definitely recommend Blinkist summaries of them. Don't fancy reading? You can also listen to the summaries, audiobook style, and even speed them up if you're really short of time. The first 100 people to click on the link in the description box below will get Blinkist for free for a whole week and 25% off if you decide to go for the full membership. The design of the new sleeper rooms is inspired from the old ones, which are pictured here. Some are on suites, available at a small premium. The design is pretty clever, but sadly the biggest disappointment on this trip was the shower having no hot water at all for the entire trip. This, sadly, is a really common and well-publicised problem with the new sleeper, which has been beset by multiple problems from day one. I didn't fancy a cold shower, so the towels went unused on this trip. The beds are roughly the same size as in the old sleeper, and note that this is a twin being used for solo occupancy, the other bed being folded away against the wall. Both upper and lower berths can take advantage of their own control panels, which control the lights, have a USB socket and the cabin thermostat. There's also a full length mirror on the back of the door. The design is really thoughtful to be honest, there's even a bed cover so you can rest your case while you unpack. An amenity kit is provided too, which contains, amongst other things, a sleep pack and a pillow spray. The bin is under the sink, and the sink is pretty large. Hot water was working in the sink, but just not in the showers. The most frustrating thing about this sleeper is that it's actually, on paper, really well designed. It looks great, it's smart, and the concept is perfect. It's just that there are so many problems with getting stuff to work. If you have a berth without ensuite, you'll need to shuffle to the end of the carriage where there's a shared toilet.
the train calls at Crewe just before midnight, which is my cue to get some sleep. I woke up as we entered Pidlockery. Now, I'd ordered a full English breakfast the night before, but apparently these are normally picked up at Preston. On this occasion, I was told the supplier failed to deliver, so only this sad looking bacon roll was available. The new Caledonian sleeper is not a good product. It is well thought out and well designed in general, and the concept is sound, but the execution of so many things is very poor. The sleeper is now a premium experience with premium prices, and it fails to deliver regularly. I've traveled this service twice now and had the shower problem both times, and neither time did we arrive punctually. On this occasion, a late running train from Inverness delayed us because we needed to wait for it to pass on a single line section. Not Caledonian sleepers fault, but this train wants to appeal to both affluent tourists and business travelers. Arriving unshowered, hungrier than I wanted to be and very late, I wasn't happy. To the company's credit, they paid my delay repay compensation at 50% of the ticket rate and gave me an extra 40 pounds for the broken shower, but the damage was done. It's a shame because I really like to promote the train wherever I think it's possible, but on this occasion I can't really recommend the Caledonian sleeper. I'm sorry. Anyway, don't forget, the first 100 people to click on the link in the description box below will get Blinkist for free for a whole week and 25% off if you decide to go for the full membership. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.